Just minutes ago, communities in the Philippines found their world split open, first by a magnitude 6.9 earthquake that swallowed roads and homes in Cebu, and then by warnings that even bigger shocks and deadly storms could still be coming. Scientists say the worst chain reaction in decades has only just begun. But what happens when disaster after disaster collides, and millions are trapped in the crossfire? The answer begins now. Sirens echo down broken streets as headlights sweep over splintered asphalt. A major highway outside Cebu City has collapsed, lanes twisted and dropped into the earth. Streetlights flicker above a crowd scrambling for safety, families clutching bags, children pressed to their parents' sides. Dust hangs in the air as another tremor rattles the city, sending loose concrete tumbling from already fractured buildings car alarms wail. In the chaos, a woman calls out for her missing son, her voice swallowed by the roar of engines and the distant shouts of emergency responders. Inside a monitoring station, a FIVO LCS operator stares at a seismograph, the ink trace spiking hard. The reading registers 6.9, shallow, centered just kilometers away. The operator's radio crackles with urgent reports, collapsed barangays in northern Cebu, roads cut off, bridges impassable. Another aftershock hits. Ceiling tiles crash to the floor in a hospital corridor as nurses rush patients onto gurneys and wheel them out into the night. In residential neighborhoods, power lines sway and snap, plunging blocks into darkness. People stumble into the open, barefoot, some still in pajamas, faces streaked with fear and dust. Aerial views reveal entire sections of the city gridlocked, headlights stretching for kilometers as families try to escape the danger zone. In one barangay, the earth has split a basketball court in two, the painted lines now jagged and broken. Emergency vehicles weave through the crowd, sirens wailing, as officials shout instructions through megaphones, urging residents to move toward higher ground and designated shelters. The ground keeps shaking. No one knows if the worst is over. By dawn, the adrenaline of flight gives way to exhaustion. In barangays across Cebu, basketball courts have become makeshift sanctuaries. The painted free throw lines are hidden beneath rows of sleeping mats, families curled up with whatever they manage to carry out during the night. Shoes line the edges of the court. Plastic bags packed with clothes, radios, and family documents stacked close for safekeeping. The air is thick with fatigue and quiet voices. Volunteers in orange vests move between the clusters, handing out bottles of water and packets of biscuits. A mother wipes dust from her daughter's hair, coaxing her to sip water. Nearby, a group of teenagers help set up folding tables for a breakfast of rice and canned fish. Outside, the walls of the gymnasium bear fresh cracks, but inside, the structure holds. A whiteboard lists names of evacuees, with new arrivals being added every hour. The local barangay captain confers with Red Cross workers, checking supplies and coordinating with city officials by radio. Some families, unable to find space indoors, shelter beneath tarps strung along the court's edge. In the corner, an elderly man sits on a plastic chair, clutching a bag of medicine, eyes closed in relief. The chaos of the night has faded into a tense calm. For now, the shelter offers safety and a moment to rest, but the uncertainty of what comes next weighs on every face. A seismic graph pulses red across a monitor as the numbers jump. Magnitude 7.4 is recorded, epicenter offshore Davao Oriental. Along the coastal barangays, the ground lurches, sending tremors through homes still standing from the last quake. Sirens wail along the shoreline, their pitch rising with the panic of families scrambling for higher ground. Within minutes, hillsides above the coast begin to shear away, earth and trees sliding into valleys with a roar that drowns out the alarms. A dust cloud billows over fractured slopes, rolling down to cover entire clusters of houses. On the roads below, traffic stalls as drivers abandon vehicles and rush inland on foot, clutching children and plastic bags with documents and food. Emergency texts flash on battered phones. Tsunami possible. Evacuate immediately. The air is thick with shouts and the shrill cry of warning horns. 
In the chaos, a father pulls his daughter from a collapsing footpath as the hillside behind them gives way, the ground splitting under their feet. The coastline that was once crowded with fishing boats and market stalls empties in a matter of minutes, leaving only the echo of sirens and the distant crash of falling earth. Tide gauges along the eastern coastline blink warnings across their screens. In a cramped monitoring room, a FIV OLCS analyst leans toward the console, eyes fixed on a digital graph. The sea level has jumped by 30 centimeters, sharp and sudden. The analyst speaks into a radio, voice steady. He says, Oscillation detected, 0.3 meters, no major tsunami, but expect hazardous currents. Emergency texts buzz on battered phones, telling coastal communities to stay clear of the water, even as rumors swirl of giant waves. Scientists cross-check satellite sea surface maps and confirm the reading, a localized surge, not a wall of water. Still, the risk is real for small boats and anyone near the shore. On the ground, the warning triggers a new wave of movement. Mountain roads clog with vehicles, engines idling in a slow crawl uphill. Traffic officials in reflective vests try to keep order, waving families through bottlenecks as buses and trucks inch forward. Some cars stall on steep grades, adding to the gridlock. The evacuation routes, already battered by landslides and aftershocks, strain under the pressure. For now, the science offers some relief, no catastrophic tsunami. But the danger is not gone. The currents remain unpredictable, the roads jammed, and the sense of urgency refuses to fade. Rain pounds the fractured city, hammering rooftops already weakened by the earthquakes. Gutters overflow in minutes, water pouring down cracked streets and pooling in the hollows left by collapsed roads. Dikes split by the shaking give way as torrents surge through new gaps, sending muddy water racing into low-lying barangays. In some neighborhoods, the water rises faster than people can run, trapping families in upper rooms and on rooftops. Coast Guard crews steer inflatable boats through the flooded streets, engines straining against the current. They call out to stranded residents, pulling children and the elderly aboard, ferrying them toward the nearest patch of dry ground. Rainfall climbs past 80 millimeters an hour, then surges toward 200 millimeters an hour, overwhelming drains and turning entire blocks into rivers. Every rescue is a fight against the clock and the rising water, as more families signal for help from windows and balconies. An entire barangay disappears beneath a river of mud. Rooftops vanish, trees are swept away, and only brown water and debris remain where homes once stood. Rescue teams wade through waist-deep sludge, ropes tied around their waists as they pull survivors from shattered walls and tangled branches. A Coast Guard boat noses between what used to be streets, its crew searching for any sign of movement. In one corner, a rescuer hauls a woman to safety, her arms wrap tight around a child as they cross the torrent by rope. The hills, already fractured by earlier quakes, gave way under relentless rain, sending whole slopes sliding in a single night. The mud buries everything, houses, fields, even the main road out. An entire community, erased in minutes. Nothing is left but the desperate work of those still searching for life, the long, dangerous work of rescue amid the wreckage. Pegasus meteorologist stands before a wall of data, voice steady as he delivers the latest. Windfields now project sustained gusts reaching 215 kilometers per hour. On the screens, the storm's core glows red, its spiral arms tightening over the archipelago. Across the country, bus convoys idle outside gymnasiums, drivers checking manifests as families board, clutching bags and blankets. In a hillside lab, a geoscience analyst reviews fresh LIDAR scans. New tension fractures snake across the slopes, ground deformation mapped in sharp relief. The analyst points to a widening scar, warning of imminent collapse if rainfall intensifies. Meanwhile, a police cyber unit sifts through viral posts, flagging a video falsely claiming a 5-meter tsunami. An officer reads the official tide gauge data aloud, oscillation measured at 30 centimeters, not 5 meters, then posts a correction, urging the public to trust only verified sources. The science is clear, 
and the movement of people follows its lead. Tonight, millions in the Philippines face a future shaped by science and uncertainty. As climate extremes and seismic risks collide, disaster chains grow harder to predict and even harder to survive. The next warning may come faster than relief. Preparedness is no longer a choice, it is a lifeline.